A common question that I always receive about the node voltage and mesh current methods is, how do I know when to use which method and which one's going to be the best approach? Well, there's a couple of quick things that we need to talk about. Uh, in most cases, the node voltage method as well as the mesh current method will be suitable for solving a circuit, but it may be more advantageous to use one method over the other. First of all, we have to talk about the concept of planar circuits. The node voltage method will work for all circuit analysis techniques or all circuit analysis situations that you may encounter. However, the mesh current method will work only for planar circuits. So a planar circuit is a circuit that's defined as being one where we can identify all of the meshes of the circuit on a two-dimensional plane. We can draw the circuit as being on a two-dimensional plane. So this one right here, this one that's been repeated multiple times, uh, this circuit right here would be a planar circuit because I can ident identify two meshes all on a two-dimensional plane. Now, if I come over here and I wanted to somehow connect, say, the peak of this um, bottom of the circuit right here with, uh, say, the corner, the top corners with the resistive element, where these resistive elements or these wires don't touch right here, you can see that we get the situation where we would have overlapping um, meshes. So in this case, we would have a mesh that would go through this sort of small triangular piece, but that would overlap with the mesh that is forming this, uh, the larger square. So in that case, we may be led to believe that since we have these overlapping meshes, that this is not a two-dimensional circuit. But what you have to keep in mind, or, or a planar circuit, excuse me, uh, what we have to keep in mind here is that if we can redraw the circuit in any way so that it will be a planar circuit, it's always going to be a planar circuit. So in this case, we can take the resistor elements from that start from this point and go to the corners, and we could redraw them like this. And that would provide the same effect as drawing them through the middle right here. Okay, so this circuit is essentially the same as this one, and now we see that we will have no overlapping meshes. That is, all of the meshes will be uh, contained, can be identified in this two-dimensional plane, and they're not going to overlap each other. So for this type of circuit, because it is a planar circuit, we can use either the node voltage or the mesh current method. If we find that it's not a planar circuit, we can only use the node voltage method. Now, what situation would a planar circuit, a non-planar circuit look like? Well, that would be a circuit where we would need to have some type of three-dimensional representation in order for it to be, um, to, uh, to be realized. So if you imagine making a cube with the sides of the cube, or with the edges of the cube, being, um, being resistive elements, there's no way that we can draw those resistive elements so that they won't create overlapping meshes with each other, and there's no way that we can untwist that network of resistors so that it all fits on one nice two-dimensional plane. So this case would be a non-planar circuit, which could be analyzed using the node voltage method, but not the mesh current method. So with those definitions in hand, most of the cases that you'll probably see will be planar circuits. So in planar circuits, we can um, use either the node voltage or the mesh current method. So the question then becomes, well, which one do you use? Well, it doesn't really matter because in both cases you're going to get the same results. You're going to uh, either solve for all of the currents or all of the node voltages, and from that you can determine the other parameters of the circuit. But it may be more advantageous to use one over the other. So let's take a look at this case right here, this top circuit. All right, if we look at the node voltage method, we can identify two essential nodes. This one right here at the top, and this one right here down at the bottom. And we know that if we have two essential nodes, that we will need one node voltage equation. However, if we were to choose the mesh current method, we would have one, two, three, four meshes, and to complicate things, we have this um, shared current supply between two of those meshes. So that means we would need, um, we would end up needing three mesh equations, 
all right? Because one of them is going to, or two of the mesh equations are going to collapse into a super no, uh, excuse me, into a super mesh equation, and we're going to need one super mesh constraint. All right? So in this case, we wind up needing four equations to solve for all of the mesh currents, where we could uh, solve the system using only one node voltage equation. So, if we want to do less work, if we want to write fewer equations and have fewer chances for errors, probably the best scenario here would be to use the node voltage method. Now, if we look at a circuit like this, we could also apply the same analysis. So here, if we want to look at the node voltage method, we have one, two, three, four, five essential nodes. Right, which would require at least five node voltage, or excuse me, four node voltage equations. However, we see that right here we have a voltage source that's connecting two of the essential nodes, so that means that we create a super node. Right, so what we would need then is one, two, three node equations. All right, two of the nodes are going to collapse into a super node, plus one constraint for that super node. Oops, sorry, we're going to need, we'll have one super node, we'll need, uh, sorry, two node equations, one super node equation plus one constraint equation. All right, however, if we come over here and we look at uh, the meshes, we see that we have four meshes, which tells us we would need four independent equations, but we also see that we know the mesh current, since there's only one current supply in this mesh and it's not shared between any of the meshes, we know that in this mesh right here and this mesh right here, we already know the currents. So for these two meshes, we already know the mesh current, so in essence, we only need to solve two mesh equations. And we see that this is going to probably be less work than this is going to be here. So we have uh, fewer equations that we're going to need to solve, so we're less prone to making errors in that case. So that would be sort of the approach that I would take to looking at uh, different circuits and determining which is the best um, solution approach to use.